Abstract. The question of how many discrete sources, multipoints, are required to transform a planar vortex into a toroidal field touches simultaneously on field theory, topology, and the structure of multipole expansions. While it is tempting to interpret increasing numbers of discrete sources as progressively closing a vortex into a toroidal configuration, this intuition obscures a fundamental topological distinction. In this work, we argue that no finite number of multipoints can generate a true toroidal field. Toroidal fields are characterized by closed circulation around a non-simply connected domain and cannot be realized through any finite superposition of point-like sources or finite order multipole moments. Instead, toroidal structure emerges only in the continuous limit, corresponding either to an infinite multipole expansion or to the explicit inclusion of toroidal moments in extended field descriptions. As a result, the transition from planar vortex behavior to toroidal topology is not sharply defined. Toroidalness is an emergent scale-dependent property rather than a discrete phase change. This perspective clarifies common ambiguities in numerical simulations and theoretical constructions and highlights the necessity of topological criteria when classifying vortex and field configurations. The question of how many multipoints are required to turn a flat vortex into a toroidal field is deceptively simple. At first glance, it suggests a quantitative answer. Perhaps there exists some finite number of discrete sources beyond which a planar vortex becomes toroidal. However, this framing conflates approximation with topology. When examined through the lenses of classical field theory, topology, and multipole expansion, it becomes clear that the question does not admit a finite numerical answer. Instead, it exposes a categorical distinction between planar and toroidal structures. A flat vortex may be understood as a two-dimensional or effectively planar circulation pattern characterized by a localized core and field lines confined to a plane. While such a vortex may exhibit strong rotational behavior, its field lines do not form closed loops in three dimensions. Topologically, the domain remains simply connected. There is no hole around which circulation can be defined. This remains true regardless of how sharply localized or how strong the vortex becomes, so long as it remains planar. A toroidal field, by contrast, is fundamentally three-dimensional. Its defining feature is the presence of closed field lines that wind around a central void, producing a genus-1 topology. Such fields are divergence-free, possess no net monopole or dipole moment, and arise only from closed-loop currents or their continuous analogues. The distinction between a flat vortex and a toroidal field is therefore not merely geometric, but topological. The latter requires a non-simply connected domain that cannot be obtained through smooth deformation of the former. Multipole expansions provide a useful formal language for examining this distinction. In classical multipole theory, increasing numbers of discrete sources generate successively higher order moments, monopole, dipole, quadrupole, octopole, and so on, each adding angular complexity to the field. One might therefore expect that sufficiently many multipoints could eventually reproduce a toroidal configuration. However, this expectation fails upon closer inspection. A true toroidal moment cannot be represented by any finite combination of standard multipoles. Instead, toroidal structure either appears as the limit of an infinite multipole series or must be introduced explicitly as a separate term in extended multipole frameworks. This limitation reflects a deeper issue. 
discrete sources cannot generate closed toroidal field lines. A finite set of points, regardless of arrangement, produces fields whose lines ultimately begin or end at those sources or extend to infinity. Closed circulation around a hole requires a continuous distribution of current, such as a ring or surface current, not a finite collection of points. Discretization schemes may approximate such distributions increasingly well, but exact toroidal topology is achieved only in the limit as the number of points tends to infinity. This observation clarifies a common misconception encapsulated in the phrase two points up to infinity. While two points, the minimal dipole configuration, can introduce rotational character into a field, they do not create toroidal structure. The field lines remain open and no topological hole emerges. Increasing the number of points improves the approximation, suppresses lower order multipoles, and produces increasingly toroidal-like behavior, but the transition is asymptotic rather than discrete. As a result, the question of when a field becomes toroidal is inherently ill-posed, if interpreted strictly. Toroidalness is a topological property, and topology does not change continuously. In finite systems, there is no sharp boundary at which planar circulation suddenly acquires toroidal topology. Instead, the field approaches toroidal behavior, without ever fully attaining it. In practice, physicists circumvent this ambiguity by adopting operational definitions. A field may be labeled toroidal when most field lines close, when dipole and quadrupole contributions fall below a chosen threshold, or when the toroidal moment dominates the multipole spectrum. These criteria are necessarily conventional and depend on resolution, scale, and numerical tolerance. Consequently, different simulations or experiments may identify different transition points, none of which are fundamental. This situation is not unique. Similar ambiguities arise in the study of turbulence onset, finite size phase transitions, and percolation phenomena, where exact behavior exists only in idealized limits. In all such cases, the physically meaningful question is not whether a structure exists in an absolute sense, but to what degree it is realized. In conclusion, no finite number of multipoints can convert a flat vortex into a true toroidal field. Toroidal structure requires a topological change that occurs only in the continuous or infinite source limit. The emergence of toroidal behavior in finite systems is therefore gradual, approximate, and context-dependent. Rather than a discrete transformation, the planar vortex asymptotically approaches toroidal topology, and the point at which it is declared toroidal reflects methodological choice rather than physical law.